Hey everyone, hey, we're at KubeCon and it is so exciting to have Kim Lewandowski and Matt Moore here. They are the founders of ChainGuard. They're two of the founders. As I understand, there's five founders, which you don't really find that often. Why'd you guys decide to do a uh, five founder startup? And perhaps then we can talk a little bit about what the startup is. Sure, sure. So the five of us have been working together at Google for many years. Um, Three of them had left Google a little bit before Dan and I, but we all knew each other very well. We've been working in the container space for a while. So we all kind of came together a few months ago and then decided to go on this journey together. Yeah, it, I, uh, Vila, Scott and I uh, were at VMware. We, we left uh, Google about two years ago now. I think at the end of the month, it'll be two years. And uh, we went to VMware for about a year, but before that we were at Google and I, feels like we worked on uh, on and off amongst each other for uh, across probably half a dozen projects over the past six or so years. And, um, uh, you know, we've, we've been working together and I think so well for so long that it was really exciting to uh, uh, the idea to come together and do this together. So who are the other three then? So it's the two of us. Uh, Dan Lawrence is our fearless leader and CEO. Um, you may have seen the hair yeah. memes circulating. Uh, there's an Easter egg on our website if you can find it. And uh, uh, Vile Aikas uh, and Scott Nichols. And Vile and Scott, what were they working on with you at Google? Vile has been in cloud for a very long time and he connected with Scott starting to do some stuff in the, Kubernetes, the broader Kubernetes space. I think they were working on the um, Service Catalog project together, which is one of the um, uh, you know projects here. Then Vile and I hooked up a few years ago to uh, it, we've been sort of working together uh, on things uh, sort of at a distance for a while. Uh, but uh, we started the Knative project together about three and a half, maybe yeah. four years ago now. My sense of time Times with the blur. pandemic is <laughs> yeah. And Scott joined us sort of uh, soon thereafter and. Uh, that's uh, that's mostly what we've been working on for the past uh, several years now. So, and then and then Dan and I started the Tecton project, right. which was a piece of Knative yeah. right. project, and then spun up the Continuous Delivery Foundation. Yes. And I think when we you know we launched Tecton, that's when we really heard a common theme of security. All these companies just really concerned about security, and I think. You know, we and Dan's done a ton of container tooling things as well. And then a few years ago, Dan and I switched to join our security org in Google, built a no, another number of um, open source projects that have that and foundations have, and foundation <laughs> yeah. that you know that have gotten some momentum. And then of course we know the Sunburst incident happened. Yeah. Um, so then a few months ago, you know, we all kind of came together and then decided to start a company um, to make supply chain security. Um, supply chain secures by default is basically our mission and making yeah. it really easy for developers to do the right thing and for companies to sort of understand what they're running in their clusters and, and how to supply or how to secure that, that supply chain, the integrity piece of it to make sure nothing's sort of tampered with as they're pushing yeah. code and things to, to their production systems. Tell us about ChainGuard and how its roots really relate to, you know, the projects you worked on at Google yeah. And how is it related to SigStore? And perhaps yeah. you could tell us more, uh, tell a little bit about what SigStore is. Yeah, so um, yeah, SigStore is one open source project that we, when we were at Google, we, we launched with in collaboration with Red Hat. Um, and SigStore is making code signing really easy. So you know, we had been listening in, inside the Open Source Security Foundation. We had heard lots of presentations about the struggles developers have about signing code and and trying to manage private keys and just what a mess it is. And that's kind of was the beginning of Six Store and the Cosign project is just to make that really easy. What's the mess? What's what's the trouble? What's the problem they have? Well, it's keeping private keys secure. It's yeah. doing key rotation. It's understanding where they're being used. And if someone stole my key, like if it's being signed, you know, if it's signing a malicious container or something. Yeah. So like monitoring all of that. And and so, yeah, Six Store was, it was one of the um, popular projects now. And so, the Salsa framework is another one that I launched while at Google. And it's giving like, a framework for supply chain integrity with a series of requirements with you know higher levels um, to make things more secure as you move up in level and so like 
you know, these two projects that you can see how they can complement each other a bit, but uh, <clears throat> um, these are some of the foundational pieces that we think we'll be using inside ChainGuard. Um, again, we're, we're a week old, so we're yeah. you know, talking to a lot of people and figuring out sort of their problems and how they think they're solving this. On Monday, we had uh, security supply chain con supply chain. Yeah. day, I guess yeah. a negative one day. day negative. And SolarWinds <laughs> came and gave the keynote and it is excellent. Like I definitely recommend checking it out. Um, they went through the story of the attack and then they actually found a lot of the open source stuff that we've been working on, Tecton, for example. And they try to put all these pieces together to just completely revamp their build systems. And so I think that's an opportunity for us in ChainGuard is to kind of do something similar for companies. You know, a lot of companies, they can't hire these teams to, to do the right thing um, easily inside their organization. So I think that's kind of where we'll start. Before they have to testify in front of Congress. Right. <laughs> so Matt, does this trace back these issues to continuous delivery? And uh, continuous integration. Yeah. So, you know, Kim mentioned, uh, Kim mentioned, you know, Tecton, which is, uh, you know, a, a big piece of the, uh, a lot of folks, uh, you know, Kubernetes based CICD um, workflows. Um, and so, you know, really uh, one of the, the key things is, you know, you, you want to be able to trace back from, you know, uh, the fingers on keyboards, who committed the code all the way to, you know, how that code got to running in, in production. And uh, it's not just about the software you're shipping, but also the, you know, the dependencies you pull in. Something like 90% of uh, software folks are shipping to their production environments uh, is coming from open source components. So it's not just about you know, uh, knowing uh, your own developers and what they're doing. It's also about sort of knowing um, sort of the provenance of how uh, you know, the things that you are depending on uh, are, um, uh, have been produced and, and handled and, and whatnot. And so there's, there's some really great materials in the, the Salsa repo and, and some of these other repos that talk about sort of all the different sort of elements of the chain, the, the sort of edges and, and states uh, through, you know, a typical software lifecycle and how on every single one of them in the last year or so, there's there's a number of examples of attacks that have happened at every single edge and state within that graph. And it's it's scary, but you know, one of the things we are trying to do is uh, make it so that, you know, when you're running software in production or distributing software, if, if you're giving it to other people to run, right? What you're running, how it got there and all of these things, because, you know, it, a lot of people don't have answers to that today. and. You know, and maybe for those who are out there, you could tell us about the Sunburst incident. Yeah, we may not so, be familiar with just the terminology. Yeah, so Sunburst um, happened, I think, well, 2019, yeah. December 2019, December 2020. I don't know, very not yeah. too long ago. And um, what happened was attackers got into their build system and compromised um, a very popular uh, piece. I think it's called Orion piece of software that they were distributing, um, and and the software got deployed you know to a bunch of their customers yeah uh and then i don't think it was caught till six six months later or something i, I don't remember the exact but anyway he, he, yeah. you know, like huge impact i think the numbers out there are 100 million 100 billion dollars and this in, is the solar winds yeah, the, yeah the yeah. estimated impact yeah, yeah. And, yes. well, and that's uh, 100 billion of like you know what's known what's, but like the the implications in terms of national security and stuff like that are yeah. Hard to quantify. Right? Yeah. And, and I think, you know, this, that was really when supply chain security kind of became more of a mainstream buzzword. Yeah. And then we saw a whole executive order out right. from Biden. And so I think we're going to see a lot of things come down from the government side that potentially like regulated companies are going to have to follow certain things now or. Yeah, and we're, we're already like seeing it with the executive order around S bombs, but we, we expect, you know, more and more and those things to work their way into various compliance mm -hmm. things like. Bed ramp and, and yeah. so how will you narrowly define your uh, your focus because there's this is such a huge and broad you know space yeah. yeah that's a great question so i think uh you know a good place for us to start is talking to these companies like i mentioned the ones that have already even found some of the open source tooling that we've built and and learning about their problems and and trying to see if they're you know it's a good fit for us too is having them kind of come on as a design partner as we really figure out what we're going to build um, as a product. And yeah, so I think we'll cast a wide net initially in terms of like who we talk to, what type of industries. I think, you know, healthcare 
makes a lot of sense for us. Um, banking, so all of these regulated industries, I think, are scrambling to, to try to make um, their supply chains more safe. So who are you talking to? Are you talking to the developers or the security professionals or both or who? Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be a mix of both. But at the end of the day, I think these you know things get sold from developers. Like we yeah. want to make it easy for developers. And so, you know, the six store, if you look at it, it's literally like two lines of code or one line of code to sign something yeah. and, and then verify the signature. And so I think you know, if we can if we can help with the developers and the experience to actually do the right thing when they're developing yeah. code, and yeah. that's kind of how it will be our shoe in to. I, I think it, I think it will end up coming from both directions. I think it'll start from like CISOs, you know, wanting their organizations to have a better security posture. But if you don't win the sort of hearts and minds of the developers, they're gonna, you know, want to find ways around what you're doing. And so back to you know, Kim said our mission was making the software supply chain secure by default, right? Like I think the the sort of core of that, right, is I think the most successful tools that we've seen, um, you know, really in, in any space make the, the sort of best practices and the right way of doing it sort of the default, the easy path. And so we want to make it easy for developers to adopt this stuff um, and to not want to, you know, reach reach around the, the things we are putting in place to keep them safe. In a perfect world, it makes their lives even better to have those things there because we can tell them about things that they might not otherwise know. When I talk to people about security in, in, in developer world, there's all kinds of things that surface. I mean, we hear about shift left, right? And then others mm -hmm. will say, well, you really should be, you know, thinking about starting from the absolute right side and, you know, and, I mean, or the left side and going right, right? You know, there's all these different approaches. And I think that the since the Linux Foundation has, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of projects mm -hmm. uh, that are out there. And, you know, I'm so I, I'm really curious on how you are going to define kind of that path for yourselves, because it does seem so broad, but it seems like signature, signature verification is, is that a, is that just a, a big ample kind of target that you can hit? Is that a reason, is there a reason why you're probably starting there? Um, I think that gives us like a lot of the some of the foundational build, building blocks and bringing and, and building some of these things out because so for example like an S bomb like if you can't verify the integrity of an S bomb like mm -hmm. you know is it and so I, I think that is a critical component to all of this is yeah. you need you need to be able to sort of trace back um, cryptographically how things are. Yeah, and I, one, I think one of the nuances and one of the talks I think it was, might have been Matt uh, Riley and Marina's talk talked about. How like signatures themselves um, aren't really you know the end goal, right? So um, right. Uh, it, you know you could sign something, but it's really just yeah. like saying you know hi, I'm Matt, right? Yeah. Um, what you really want to be able to do is things like S ones. You want to make claims about you know a thing, right? Like yeah. th this is the set of things that went into this, and that then sign that, right? Yeah. And then you know uh, there's a set of people you trust to say certain things about uh, certain things, and then you get to sort of cho choose how small a circle of trust that you let into your different environments, right? So I think that's, um, you know, that's the, the next step once you've made signing easy, right? Starting to talk about stuff like- Policy. How you, yeah, <laughs> how, you, how you make these attestations and, you know, schemas around how you uh, say different types of things, what, what folks want to say about what uh, and right. so on, and then policy around that sort of standard schema. We're gonna- have to conclude here, but I want to thank you very much for taking the time to talk about yep. Chainguard. I look forward to seeing its development. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us.